All right, next up, uh, with his second attempt to stay on time, we're going to have Chris Pikert talking about trapdoors for lattices, simpler, tighter, faster, smaller. Okay, four positive adjectives for trapdoors for lattices. If you don't know anything about lattice cryptography, uh, here's a 30-second crash course. Uh, you get a public key. It's actually very simple. You get a public key. It's just a matrix. It's short and fat. The number of rows is n, and the number of columns is m, which is uh, about n times log q, where q is a pretty small uh, modulus number. Okay, and it's just a uniformly random matrix. We have two one-way functions that we often use uh, in the literature. The one on the right is injective, and you just multiply s on the left by a random s, and then you add some error to the output. This is hard if the famous learning with errors problem is hard. Hard to, this is one way. Uh, on the left, we just take a short x, a short random x with small integers, uh, integer entries, and we just take a times x. This is hard to invert if the famous SIS problem is hard from I-1096. You can do a few things with these two functions if you only use them in the forward direction. You can do collision-resistant hash functions, and you can do in the CPA secure encryption. Caveat, that includes fully homomorphic encryption now, but it's still only in CPA secure. You can't do much else if you only use in the forward direction. If you want to do more applications, then you need to invert these functions. What that means in the injective case is obviously find the unique preimage. In the uh, surjective case, it means that you, given a U output, you actually need to sample from among all the preimages under a Gaussian distribution for mysterious reasons. How do you do this? You need a, a strong trapdoor for the matrix A, which is uh, in concretely something called a short basis, a short lattice basis, and you need to generate A together with such a basis. Okay? If you can do this, then there are a few applications. They include chosen ciphertext security, identity-based encryption, hierarchical identity-based encryption, signatures, lots of other things. Uh, there's some drawbacks to this. All of these schemes use this generation, uh, trapdoor generation algorithm as a black box. Um, but the generation algorithm, trust me, is very complicated and slow. It's polynomial time, but you wouldn't want to implement it. I've tried. And the second is that uh, the inversion algorithms for f and g, these one-way functions, are either, pick your poison, sequential and need big integer arithmetic, or uh, they're parallel and use small integers but give you suboptimal dimension and quality, whatever that means. So we would like to address these drawbacks. Our contributions are new trapdoor generation and inversion algorithms. Vastly simpler, uh, much faster as well. To generate them, you just need one matrix multiply. To invert F and G, uh, we have efficient and highly parallel algorithms, which actually do most of the work offline before they even know what value they want to invert, uh, and uh, they're fast. Uh, we give also tighter and more secure parameters, so they're asymptotically optimal and the constants are small. Uh, so concrete example improvements you can expect are eight times, eightfold in the dimension M, 112-fold in the quality, uh, which implies about 50-fold improvement in the key sizes. Uh, we give a new trapdoor notion. So forget about what I told you about a short basis. This new trapdoor is actually a lot smaller, uh, 4x smaller in the base case, and uh, gives you easier delegation in uh, some advanced applications. Uh, and so we have a few applications which go beyond just what you'd get from plugging in these first three things into previous work uh, on CCA encryption and signatures. So let me just show you a brief overview of what's involved. Uh, all these things have showed up in the literature in one place or another, and we're just combining them actually in new ways uh, and giving better algorithms for dealing with them. So we start with a fixed lattice called G as a gadget. And this gadget uh, for, is very structured, as you can see, and we give some very specialized uh, fast parallel offline algorithms for the inversion problems there. And then we just randomize G with a single matrix mult, and that's very easy. And then uh, we give, uh, here's where the actual work is, is we reduce uh, in inverting F and G relative to this random matrix A to the inversion algorithms for G, and that's it. Thank you.